Well, we have a first on our trips. The Yellow Cat, this new place, Dildo Run Provincial Park. The Yellow Cat thinks she absolutely has to get outside and claw these trees. Last night we were in a tiz because she didn't have her harness on and she was trying to climb a tree. It was dark. Uh, we had visions of some wild animal in the park eating her. But you can see she is absolutely not worried about the halter or the uh, rope or the uh, harness. Now uh, Lynn's going to have to spend her morning following a cat around. Well, I'm going to have cat duty while uh, Yellow Cat is out here and Lynn goes back and finishes breakfast. Uh, not really hard duty. Well, Yellow Cat sure thinks that life is good. Claw and everything. Sharpening those claws. Oh, life is good. This is just for your information type of thing. Every morning, well, nearly every morning, this is our breakfast. It's uh, easily made and we really like it. Those are frozen blueberries that have been uh, thawed out. Uh, we have those every morning. Once in a while, Lynn will cut up a banana and put it in. Or when we're home, we will have uh, strawberries or raspberries with it. Then an English muffin with peanut butter and a dab of honey. Some of that honey, uh, not today, but some of that honey comes from my brother's prairie honey in Missouri. We were down trying to download a video for day 19, which didn't work out. But I thought before we left, go back to the trailer, I'd show you what this place looks like. Just standing here in the middle of the uh, campground road. We've moved from our campground to Twilling Gate. It's actually an island north of where we were. It's right on, the, absolutely the best I can tell, right on the tip of this piece of land. We've driven up to the uh, Twilling Gate Lighthouse. I'll get the correct name when we walk over there, but I'm going to swing around and the the light's clearing out, or the weather's clearing out. It's going to be bright and sunny before long, and there's an iceberg floating along. Give you a little perspective, that's a sailboat, a real nice one. A lot of money there. And there's the iceberg. I'll go back to the sailboat to give you a little bit perspective. A big sailboat, an iceberg. That would appear to be a pretty good As you know, uh, Lynn and I like uh, rugged areas. That's just the way we are. So this is uh, there's an overlook here by the lighthouse. We think something like this is just fantastic. And we're high. Those are people down there you can see. Now they don't look like people, but they are. We won't be able to take a picture of it today other than this one. But far, far, far on the horizon there. There's another uh, iceberg headed our direction, but a uh, person uh, here at the site says that they move about 10 kilometers a day uh, in the current, so it's going to be a, a while before he gets here. This is where we are today, Long Point Lighthouse. I'm standing at the base of the lighthouse. I'm going to pan around. And right there is our iceberg. See if I can. 
Now that looks like an ice cube floating in the ocean, but let me tell you, it is way, way, way bigger than that. I gave a perspective earlier when that sailboat went by, and it's a big chunk of ice. You need to think about that most of that ice is under the surface, not exposed. Len was just uh, talking with a person who has a, the art gallery here. He gave us some really interesting information about this iceberg. This iceberg has been captured here since April. He was so large and he was so close to the shore, evidently he caught the bottom and cannot move. And he will actually uh, die here over time. Uh, he was huge it's when they started, but as you know, April was a long time ago, and he keeps melting. Today is a very warm day, and they've had many warm days, so he is melting at an exponential rate. Oh, there he goes more! He is disintegrating now. In front of our eyes. Oh, you hear it? I can't hear it. You can hear the big crashes. He's about half the size he was when we got here, and you can see the, the water disruption, and you can see the pieces that have fallen off of him. It's like a UFO has landed. Big circle of oh, water he's disruption. It's actually steaming where that cold is. Yeah, you can see the steam, oh, yeah. interact, the ice interacting with the uh, warm seawater. Like a mini tsunami. Yeah. Well, I bet he's lost a quarter when that came down. I, saw, I actually oh, saw that. It didn't have the camera going. Uh, it was quite impressive. I don't know that. Jerry, you have to wait for me. If you look at that, it's just pretty impressive. He's uh, coming apart. He's disrupting a huge area. But you got to realize he is not an ice cube. He is an uh, iceberg, and he is actually very large. So I climbed down a hiking trail. This is absolutely as close as we can get to him without getting on a boat and driving out there. You see the disruption to the surface and the pieces of ice. And I'm going to use the word imploded because I don't know the correct term for icebergs when they uh, fail. It appears like he imploded. He fell apart is what he did. On that uh, my right side, a huge, huge amount of him fell off into the water. I actually saw that. Did not have the camera running. But you can see the disruption to the surface and the pieces of ice everywhere. I'll show you a picture of where we walked to. Just an absolutely lovely overlook that you're welcome to walk up here and fall off the edge if you want to because there's no safety rails. This is the real deal. Several people here. Actually it's a beautiful place. That's uh, a whale surfacing. There's the iceberg. Oh, not very far apart. Stale's going to come up again. There he is. It's a pretty good shot of a whale. We're eating lunch at a very <laughs> lovely little cafe, and I mean little. They're, well, obviously you know Lynn and I, their desserts are impeccable and unbelievable. They can make you about any kind of coffee, tea, whatever you want. This is a real first class place. In, well, we in Twilling, Twillingate. Gone to the fish market here in uh, Twillingate, and uh, 
I spelled the name of the little fish wrong. They're C-A-P-L-I-N and there they are. You can buy them and eat them. They don't just for gulls and whales. These are actually dried. Um, uh, at the fish market by the dinner theater which we're going to attend tonight. This is a tank uh, I would call it huge and in this tank and you can probably hear the water cascading it's just hundreds of live lobsters they all have their claws banded so they don't kill each other but it uh, for people who are land lovers like us who only see a lobster one in a once in a blue moon at a restaurant or something this is really unreal the next tank is a smaller tank looks like they have sorted them by size these are all very uniform the in tank are They've been sorted by size also, and they are big. So the first tank was a different, uh, they were mixed with this bottom tank, and there's hundreds in here too. It's unbelievable. These are huge. The fourth tank. There's some big guys in the fifth tank, but very few of them, I'm assuming, well, I have no idea how they deal with them. Fish market is the Waterside Fish Market and Twillen Gate. I wanted to take a walk and we're walking uh, what they're, I guess you would call it their harbor. I'll swing around, You're, the tide is out. That's why you see all this uh, exposed, but you can see on the far side, they're just a pile of uh, fishing ships. Some of them pretty big. This is Russ Edgar, Avion Overlander. Uh, if you look behind me, you can see that the world is black. That means it is nighttime. We have had a uh, unbelievably marvelous day. Uh, we finished up. We violated the one rule that we've had from every Newfoundlander was do not drive at night. Well, we went to a wonderful dinner show and... Uh, we drove home very carefully at 50 kilometers per hour that's about 35 miles per hour for a long way uh, lights on there wasn't any traffic i had one person behind me at one time however as we drive along here is a big old cow moose walk across the road in front of us we came to a stop. I turned on my blinkers. I actually tried to get my camera out to take a picture of her. But life is fleeting like that and you can never get it done. Uh, then she turned around and walked back across the road to two calves. We could not believe our luck. Today we had the ultimate luck and Newfoundland. Uh, I would really like for you to subscribe to us, uh, be safe out there, and have fun.